Uh, my name is Anna Muhammad. I'm NOFA Mass's Food Access Director. I am based here in Springfield, Massachusetts, Western Mass, Pocumtuck Nation. And again, we would love to know where we, where you are viewing this workshop from. So feel free to use the chat feature. You are joining us today in the 11 a.m. track, and this is Yoga Rooted Approach to Building Wellness Through Farm Work with Julie Bradley Lowe. We're so happy to have her with us today. And we're just going to start with a few housekeeping announcements, uh, land acknowledgement, and um, some introduction of our uh, vendors, as well as a brief introduction of our wonderful presenter. So first off, I want to talk a little bit about NOFA's uh, commitment to racial equity and justice. Uh, at NOFA Mass, we are working to deepen our commitment to racial equity and justice, including honest work that examines whiteness and dismantling systems of white supremacy that are a part of many dominant systems, including our food and agricultural systems. We understand that the foundation of modern organic agriculture is rooted in long-standing cultural practices of BIPOC communities. And we also acknowledge that the US was built on stolen land and that the food system was built on the stolen, stolen labor of Black, Indigenous, Latinx, Asian, and other people of color. Um, as a point, as you can see behind us, this beautifully colored map is a map of all of the different Indigenous nations that still inhabited lands that we currently live and farm on, we'd like for you to take a minute and use the uh, link here that you see in the uh, see in our slide. We will place it here in the chat uh, so that you can locate where you live and the uh, indigenous nation that currently uh, is still stewarding that land and that you're currently residing and farming on so that uh, you can see um, that family. I mentioned before that I am on Potomac land, which is Springfield, Massachusetts. For this weekend, we wanted to do a very strong call to action for our allies and co-conspirators. Um, it's one thing to name land, but it's another to actually uh, go to work and uh, work in partnership work and allyship. And so some of the things we just wanted to point out as a reminder, uh, some of the ways that you can work to assist with this is sharing resources, including land, money, and tools with BIPOC-led organizations. We uh, listed some examples. You may have some very close to you. Support legislation that will begin to talk and advance the work towards reparation and then protect the rights of farm and food workers. Also just to point out two events that are taking place for all BIPOC participants, there will be a BIPOC caucus that will take place in the lunch hour from one to two today. And tomorrow there's a Spanish lounge for Spanish speakers. If you know any one of these two categories, uh, point that out, let them know about it. And it's also in our program book. Just some quick etiquette and housekeeping. We live, we right now are operating in the world of Zoom. Normally we would be in person at our conferences and we could share community. We are trying to duplicate that in the internet world. And so you can participate this in this by helping us um, in these few things. So when you enter the room today, you came in as mute uh, unmuted already. We ask that you stay that way um, in the question and answer phase. You just simply press the microphone icon that's at the bottom of your screen that will take you off mute. Once you ask your question, we do ask that you place yourself on mute, back on mute so that the sound quality can be maintained for everyone. You can use the chat feature at any time to put to uh, place your question in uh, for our presenter. Uh, as a note, this particular workshop, we will take questions at the end. So feel free, uh, you can put your questions during the presentation, but Julie will take questions at the end. Uh, there will be a Q&A. And then lastly here, this session is being recorded, just to let you know. I uh, just wanted to give big thanks to our sponsors that help us every year with our winter conference. You see some here on the screen. Please go through your program book uh, and uh, patronize them. 
go to their website. Some may even offer discounts for attending the, the conference this weekend. So these are our gold sponsors that you're seeing right now. And now our silver sponsors. And again, please visit with them online. Uh, see what kind of wonderful products they have. We are so grateful to our gold and silver sponsors for their support of our conference. Finally, there's an online auction. Uh, they have some wonderful things out there. We'll put the link for you to take advantage of that, but feel free to go to that throughout the conference. And I think it will close uh, Sunday evening. So get your bids in as soon as you can. Very quickly, I just wanted to give a great, uh, or a very quick uh, intro to our presenter here. I'm very, we're very excited to have her with us. And it's something that's much needed. I know I need it. Julie Bradley Lowe is currently a yoga instructor of 10 years and her emphasis has been on anatomy and therapeutics. She's been farming since 2011. She now owns and manages a regenerative micro CFA uh, and she is out of Ontario, Canada. So please help me welcome Julie Bradley Lowe. And if you have your mats, please get them and uh, let's stretch and uh, get ready. So Julie, it's all for you. Thank you, Anna, for this. Um, I'm very um, grateful to be part of this conference with you. And if it was in person, I'm not sure if I would have been able to come uh, and participate. I hope so, but actually the virtual makes it way more easier. So um, if you have a map, it's great. If you don't and just have a rug, it's completely fine. If you haven't had a chance yet to grab a blanket, then I'm inviting you to grab a blanket. I like the Mexican type blanket, but um, not too fluffy is nicer. So we can actually um, uh, fold it. So uh, we're going to begin and um, I wanted to just do this class all the way through. So uh, and then answer your question. So I, I hope it's fine with you um, because I want you to experience a, a full class and, and, and see the benefits right away and let you pause and, and notice the before after, before we rush into another movement or before we stand up, okay? So we're going to begin in a seated position on a blanket or if you really don't have a blanket, then take a thin pillow. And so in a seated position, you can cross your legs if it's available for you, or you can also have your legs extended, or you can lean against the wall or make yourself in the pinwheel position. So it's whatever works for your hips and your knees. If you're, you're okay with a seated position, cross-legged, and you have a couple of more pillows, then you can also prop your knees up, okay? Now, what I'd like to show you quickly into how to sit in the, in the, in this um, blanket is like, I'm not sitting right into the middle. What I'm doing is I'm sitting on the edge of it because you see the difference. If I'm sitting in the middle, it's easy for me to slouch my back, but it helps me even more when I'm sitting on the edge because it gives me a natural little tilt of the pelvis so that my shoulders can align with my hips. Okay, because basically, if you have to remember something from this workshop, a sentence would be good alignment is good therapy. So everything that we're seeing here on the mat into our home, our office, inside, you can take it away into the field and you can practice it because it's what I do. <laughs> Anyhow, let's begin with a comfortable seated position where you can bring your shoulders on top of your hips and just have your arms nice and relaxed. And we're going to begin with a breath practice that's going to keep us in touch with our pelvic floor. So men, women have pelvic floor muscles. And this is a huge element of strength into your farming. So what we're going to do is going to breathe in and out through the nose, but we're going to activate the pelvic floor as we exhale. So my top hand is going to give you an image of the pelvic floor activation. So I'm inhaling gently through my nose, my pelvic floor is relaxed. And then when I'm exhaling, I'm going to gently activate the pelvic floor as if I was going to hold going to the bathroom. And then when I'm inhaling, I want to really fully soften it and relax it. 
exhaling, activating the pelvic floor. Inhaling, soften. So you can go with the flow of your breath. You don't have to necessarily follow my hands. If it's easier to follow my hand, then follow my hand. So I'm doing it through my mouth because I'm talking to you. So you must fill it with the contact of the floor or the contact of the mat or the blanket or the pillow that your pelvic floor muscles are activating, contracting. And when you're inhaling, they're softening. Let's do that for a couple of more at your own pace. and then come back to a natural way of breathing. Now, why do we contract the pelvic floor when we exhale? It's because usually we wanna make an effort when we exhale. We're expelling the air out, so we're creating actually more room for the pelvic floor muscles to activate, okay? So when you're lifting a hay bale, then you're going to Exhale, activate your pelvic floor muscles and then into the effort, okay? So try to remember that. You want to exhale in the effort and you want that exhale to be supported from deep down your pelvic floor muscles. Good. Now we can move away the blanket for a moment and we're going to lie down on our mat and we're going to start limbering up because like I was saying to Anna, um, it's great in the winter, we're more on screens, we're doing a little bit more indoor stuff than outdoor stuff. And I think it's as beneficial to limber up in the winter as it is in the peak of the season. So find a comfortable position on your back, like so, with your legs bent and bringing your feet at your shoulders distance apart or your mat distance apart if you have a mat. And then we'll bring our arms in front of ourselves and we'll hold onto our elbows. Good. Now, next time we exhale, we're going to drop our knees to one side and the arms into the other side. So you're bringing limbs in opposite direction. And then when you inhale, you bring arms and legs back to center. Next exhale, you're dropping into the other side. So my arms are going to go to the side they haven't been yet and same thing with my legs. And then when I inhale, I bring them back to center. Exhale, drop. And inhale back to center. Now, start within what your body has to offer, okay? Don't force your way through the stretch. Just Release the weight of your arms and legs to the pull of gravity. Allow your head to look towards the ceiling or close your eyes and roll your head from side to side. Moving arms and legs in opposite direction using your breath to pace that movement. It's no more the rhythm of the clock or the rhythm of the mind, it's the rhythm of the body that we're following, our natural rhythm. And the repetition of motion is going to gently warm up your major joints, so the shoulders and the hips. Along the way, of course, ankles, elbows. Your breath is natural and easy.
And then next time you're dropping your arms and your legs on opposite side, then just take a moment here and breathe and hold that position. Inviting your whole body to soften and breathing deeply through your belly. Again, don't force anything down towards the ground. It's more about releasing to the attraction of the gravity. It's about relaxing joints, the contracting muscles. It's okay to exhale gently through the mouth. I often do that when it's a very good stretch. <sighs> It's good to slow down. <sighs> At any moment, you can come back to center and drop your arms and legs in the opposite direction. But don't rush anything if it's really delightful for you to stay in that very position. We all have different timing. We all have different sensations. So whenever it's time for you to drop onto the other side, it's the same intention. You want to breathe deeply through your belly. Sending your breath where you feel the stretch. And inviting the limbs to drop to the gravity. Relaxing and decontracting muscles and joints. So if holding this doesn't feel good to you, then don't force yourself into it. You can very well come back to the back and forth movement. But if it does feel amazing to you, then you can drop your arms and your legs on the previous side and hold for a little bit more, maybe two or three longer deep breath and something on the other side until you feel that your sequence is complete, that your body is satisfied. Now you might feel valleys of sensations, maybe tightness, maybe soreness, then just acknowledge these sensations without judging. This is my number one limber up movement of all times. I've been practicing this for over 10 years. Even with little kids crawling all over me in the living room, even for just three minutes each morning, each evening, this is an amazing way of taking the edges off and it's a complete stretch. Let's come back to center, arms and legs back to center, and then let's grab onto one leg, hands on one knee, allowing the other leg to relax on the ground. Okay, so here, if you can't fully reach your knee, you can reach behind the knee, or otherwise you can go grab a scarf maybe, or a strap, or a belt, whatever. So you're holding on that leg that is bent, and you see everything is relaxed, everything else is relaxed, my shoulders are relaxed. But what I want is elongate my spine. So I wanna feel my tailbone on the ground, and I wanna, Tuck my chin in so my spine is nice and elongated. And I'm just going to hold my knee on that side of my body and breathe, breathing into that tightness. Big belly breath here. 
we're going to move our ankles or ankle. We're going to make circles with it to awaken the proprioceptors, muscle, the proprioceptor nerves, sorry. So sometimes in the winter, that proprioceptor is a bit asleep with tight socks, tight boots, less physical exercise. So you want to wake it up a little bit and then roll in and roll out of the ankle, rolling in, rolling out, rolling in, rolling out. And then wiggling the toes and releasing cricks and cracks. Great. Finish that up. Take your time. No rush. We're going to bend that other leg that was on the floor. And then we're going to rest our ankle onto that knee. And we're going to push the knee away from ourselves. That's the prep. You feel how it's opening up your hip. Breathe into that. Always supporting your body into stretch by breathing. I call it breath feeding your stretch. <sighs> Wonderful. Then again, whenever you're ready, we're going to lift that foot off the ground and either grab behind the knee or in front of the knee, wherever you want. So see, I'm lifting my shoulders off the ground, but I want to reestablish my head down. And as much as possible, relax my shoulders far away from my ears. Now that's a very deep hip stretch, and not just only the hip, it's the piriformis. It's wherever you feel it. Now, if it's not available for you today, then come back to this, okay? There is always a way to break down the position so it's more accessible for your body because your body shifts and the sensations shift depending on the day of the month, depending on the season. So I want you to feel empowered and knowing that you can get a stretch even though you cannot access it to the fullest. So let's continue breathing here. <sighs> Maybe a couple of more breaths. Again, if it's available for you or whenever you're ready, you can rest your foot back onto the ground. And then on your exhale, drop your foot down, uncross your legs, and for a moment, just in, extend your legs right back down to where they were. And take a moment to notice how you're feeling on either side of your body, okay? Just notice and appreciate the shifting of sensations. So you're just breathing naturally here, and you're paying attention. Does one leg feel more heavy than the other or cooler or longer or um, warmer or whatever sensations you might grasp. Anything is right. And then when you'll be ready, we'll grab onto the other knee, the knee of that leg that we haven't fully stretched yet. Make sure shoulders are relaxed and tucking your chin in to elongate your spine. And we're just going to hold it here. Heavy elbows. Again, you don't want to crank your knee in towards yourself. It's not a good way to force the stretch. You want to come in with gentleness and appreciation and just allow time and repetition to help. Enjoy that tightness. You know it won't last after that stretch. You might feel better. And whenever you will feel ready, you can start circling that ankle joint. Trying to, full, to find the full range of movement of that ankle joint. It's completely fine to release cricks and cracks. <laughs> you might hear mine. Yeah, I want 
one way and then the other. Take your time though, no rush. It's not a to-do list here. We want to slow down, it's the winter month. <laughs> and then we're going to roll in and roll out the ankle. Roll in and roll out. Again, to kind of awaken that proprioceptor nerves. That will help us throughout the class and the position that we're going to do. <sighs> Don't hold your breath back. And then again, whenever it's time for you and you're ready, you can bend this leg and rest that ankle onto your knee. Now, stage one is just to push that knee away from yourself. And then you're feeling that it's starting to open up that hip and you breathe in there. Hmm. The more you're breathing, the more the sensations of stretch are fading away. And the muscle spindle nerve that is bringing muscles into tightness back together is actually relaxing. So the more you breathe, the more you're telling your nervous system, hey, it's okay for me to do that, it's safe. Now, if you wanna go a little deeper and if it's available for you, then grab behind your knee, in front of your knee, and then me lengthen your spine, trying to drop as much as possible the shoulders down and tuck your chin in. Now, what I like to do here for an even uh, deeper stretch, it's to push with my elbow into my knee. So it's a counter action. I'm bringing that bent knee here towards me. And then this knee that is bent over top, I'm pushing it away from myself. Oh yeah, <laughs> you feel that? Then breathe deeply. Again, at any moment, you can undo and step away from the stretch if it doesn't honor you anymore. And we can hold that for a couple of more breaths. And then gently, you can undo it, bring both legs back to center, elongate them for a moment so that you are allowing your body a moment to reorganize itself and you're acknowledging the sensations that have been shifting. Take a couple of belly breaths. Wonderful. Then let's roll to the side. Okay, I don't want you to stand up by crunching up. I want you to roll to one side. And gently and slowly push onto your hands and find your way back into seated. So find that blanket again or that pillow. And then we're going to sit again on it. I love blankets. It's just very easy, accessible props and makes things nicer and easier for everyone. Oh, so those couple of movements or limbering up movements that you can do before or after farm works, you know, they just take the edges off. You can do them briefly from like holding three long deep breaths on either side or you can add up to more. And on a regular basis, it is, it is a great way of limbering up and taking the edges off and just checking with your body how it feels, okay? Good. So now what I'd like you to um, have as a tool is that stretch that is going to be for the forearm and for the wrist because holding buckets, uh, carrying animals, uh, you know, electrical uh, fence net, 
uh, anything, you know that, I don't have to explain you how your hands and your wrists are always working, right? So we're going to get that nice stretch. And, and this, is, this is just so handy because it's so hard to get a good stretch from that part of the body, okay? So you're nicely in a comfortable position, making sure your shoulders are aligned with your hips as much as possible. And then we're going to bring one arm at shoulder height, a little bit more to the front of you than in the back, okay? So you wanna have it here. And we're going to make a fist with a hand, but you don't put your thumb in, okay? And that fist is just fingers in, but the thumb is still out. And then those knuckles, they're going to roll in towards your wrist, but your arm is extended, okay? Do you start feeling that stretch here? Yeah. So you're going to keep that tension, knuckles towards the wrist. And slowly, as we're breathing, we're going to roll our arm in so it's not about contracting those it's all about feeling that stretch here yeah Notice if the stretch is just located to here or if it's traveling other places and keep breathing. Good, whenever you arrive here, then we're going to unroll the arm, keeping that tension, that stretch between knuckle and wrist. And slowly, as we're breathing, we're going to unroll this. Now, when you arrive kind of near the end where you can't, you know, unfold anymore, then you're going to open up the palm of your hand, very wide, stretch a nice stretch of the palm of the hand. And then you're going to wiggle your finger, each of them, even the thumb, and then ha, ah, relax your arm back down. Now just take a moment again to check arm that we just stretched, any other arm, wrist, fingers, anything. Even look at them, look at the differences of colors if there is. Good, we're going to do that on the other side. So bring your arm at shoulder height and then roll your, your fingers into a fist, not the thumb, and then knuckles of those fingers towards the wrist and roll in. You don't have to look at it. You can just look straight ahead Soften your eyebrows and clench your teeth. Relax your whole body and bear with the stretch throughout the breath. Good, at any moment when you arrive there, you can go any further, then you're going to unroll very slowly, keeping the tension, knuckles to the wrist. Oh, when you're done that, open up your palm of the hand. Stretch of the fingers nice and wide. Yes, and then we go all of your fingers, releasing pricks and cracks. And drop your arm back down. Ooh, take a couple of deep breaths here. Wonderful. Excellent. So I hope you really enjoyed that wrist stretch and it's part of the handout that I gave you at the end of the class. So it's called the wrist stretch. Now let's go on to hands and knees 
and let's get the movie, the movie, the body moving, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, let's get the body moving a little bit more and then we'll get into something that is really um, viable for outdoor and gardening and uh, farming. So you see what I just done? I just open up that blanket and then I'm going to pop up my knees because my knees are always a bit sensitive. Now, if that was the wrist that were a little bit sensitive, I would bring my uh, blanket here and just rest my, the, you know, the back of my wrist here just on it. Now, if it's knees and wrist that are a little bit sensitive for you, then you can very well, you know, make a little fold onto your mat and help you out like this. Okay, there's always a way so that you can have a more sustainable practice. So let's hand, lend, sorry, our hands underneath our shoulders and our knees underneath our hips. Good. Well, we're just going to do a basic flow for one minute. So we're going to inhale and get a nice front extension of the body. So you see I'm over exaggerating the curve in my back. I'm allowing the belly to go down and I'm having that nice front extension from pubic bone to the chin. You can look up if you wish, that's a cow. And then as you exhale, you can round your back. So I'm pushing into my mat with my hands. I'm allowing my head to drop down. My shoulders are towards my ears and my pelvis is just hunched forward. That's a cat. And then inhaling, leaning back into child's pose. And then when I wanna exhale, when I'm exhaling, I'm going to curl my toes under into an easy downward dog. You see my easy downward dog? My Heels are not reaching for the floor. It's not the point. My knees are bent so I can really have a nice, nice straight back. It's where the stretch is. Bring shoulders far from the ears. Open your heart and hang here. Ha. Ah. Good. Let's inhale again. Drop knees. Open the heart into that nice palm extension cow. Exhale. Round your back into cat. Inhale and back into chops pose. And then exhale, downward dog. Now I'm inviting you to move in that flow with your own breath. When it's time to inhale, cow. When it's time to exhale, cat. Inhaling, leaning back, chops pose. And exhaling, downward dog. So it's a very simple. Flow, yes, is very effective to warm up the spine and to limber up as well. Inhale, cat. Oh, sorry, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, child. And exhale, don't worry, dog. We can go on for a couple of more. Good. Don't rush anything and, and finish your flow. And whenever you're done, we're going to meet into um, table pose. Now, um, to do that, that little squat, I'm going to, to show you how um, helpful it is to squat in the garden instead of bending over. And I used to be really reluctant to squatting because I didn't feel uh, confident into my squatting that was usually very sore. And, and then I really brought in my yoga practice into the garden as, as I was weeding. And I was like, of course, that makes complete sense, right? So. I'm on my knees as much as I can in my garden. Honestly, um, having a little gardening pad or not, 
having just a very thick hands. But I do often go on two hands and knees because it's comfortable for me. And then you see, if you walk your hands back to yourself, then you can find the squat position. Let's do that again. From table pose where you can go from one bed, one row to the other. And you see, you, you move that way. Just pretend we're pretending. You know, if it was an in-person <laughs> class, I would, I mean, it's in the winter, so um, I don't know if you have snow in Massachusetts, but you know, if you didn't have snow, even if you would have snow, we would have pretend in the snow to just attend to the beds or to see. Anyhow, stepping your hands and then finding that squat position. So if I do it in front of you so you can see me on a different angle, I'm on hands and knees. I'm walking my hands towards me and shifting again. Back down, walk. And it's just all about the play of moving the weight of the body and feeling more comfortable. Now, if you start to feel strain, for example, on your wrist, it's okay. You can go on your fingertips or on your fists, okay? Yes, let's just do it one more time, okay? Walk your hands away. And then your hands back towards yourself. Now, if it's available for you, and you can very well have a chair beside you or the bowl to hold yourself. But let's, let's, let's hold ourselves a little bit into that squat position. So I'd like also to show you things. Um, don't believe that you have to have your heels again on the ground. And, but pay attention to where your knees are bent. So you don't want your knees to collapse inward because, you know, if I'm doing this that you shouldn't do, that there's going to hurt your hips and your ankles, all right? So good alignment is good therapy. You want to look that your knees are bending over your toes, okay? That's good alignment. So now let's say that, and if you need to take a break from that squat position, that's very good. And you can come in and out of the position again passing through um, you know, table pose. But let's say that you're in this position with me right now. You're in the garden. You can, you can just reach to the side, back to squat, and reach to the other side, okay? Let's try to get some organic movement going. You know, that's insight, insight um, practice, you know? When you are in the garden, and you're doing this, oh, you need to move up to the row, then you're going to move on hands and knees. Oh, you need to move back, back to squat. Make sure your knee is bent over your toes. And to do that, I don't know if you see really, maybe I'll put myself on the side here, but I have my toes slightly internally rotated, okay? So if I do this, that would mean that I need to have a greater push towards my toes that if I bring my foot slightly in, then I'm safe, okay? So just look around, look at your body, notice, look what feels comfortable, and then move from one side, bridge, back to squat, to the other. So it's when you're already down onto the ground, okay? When you're down onto the ground, then move close to the ground. Yeah, good. So it might mean that you might have to review a little bit the footwear that you're wearing because I wear boots constantly uh, because I'm dealing also with animals. And so I noticed that uh, certain boots are just uncomfortable when I'm bending this way. So sometimes I use uh, maybe hiking shoes or other shoes into the garden. So you might have to notice but right now we're inside and we're pressing and we're pretending and, and we're practicing so that you can take that into your greenhouse onto the field okay now you're maybe a little bit done <laughs> with that squat position so what we're going to do is we're going to do one more thing before we stand up and this exercise is great for uh, bringing more clarity into your brain 
and also practicing a little bit of inversion, inversion, so that um, uh, it flushes more blood into the brain. Okay, so don't be too scared. It's nothing very advanced, but I personally really enjoy it, and and it's part of my daily routine right now um, in the winter. So if you have that blanket, you might want to use it or it might not. It's completely up to you. But we're in that um, child's positions with toes together, big toes together, knees apart, okay? And then I'm putting my hands like so, and then my forehead is going to go onto the ground, okay? And when I'm inhaling, I'm going to bring my bum up and roll from forehead to top of the head. And when I'm exhaling, I'm bringing myself back to center. So I inhale, my bum goes up and I'm rolling from forehead to top of the head. It's called a jackrabbit. And when I exhale, I bring my bum down and my head goes back to the forehead touching the ground, okay? Let's do a couple of those. Good. And then slowly and gently come back to center. So I just find that inversion, anytime I feel like uh, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I have too much to think about, too much to plan, then I'm doing this. And then I come back slowly, you know, to what I was doing. And then I see things differently. So that's a tool also because farming is not just being outside and working with our bodies is also a lot to do with working with our mind and planning and organizing and processing things. So remember that table pose, remember stepping your hands towards you, getting into that squat. We're going to do this, but this time we won't stay in. We're going to gently push into the ground and find a bend into our legs and hang ourselves like so. And then slowly we're going to unroll our spine one vertebra at a time to find our way into standing. Good, so if you need to take a break for some water or run to the bathroom, then do it now. And uh, that's going to be the last part of the class before we lie down into restorative position. And so, yes, Julie, did you want to take any questions now during this break or are you ready to, you just want to go ahead and let people take a bathroom break? I, I think they are, I just, it's just a quick, short, short break of like, one minute, not even. So I wouldn't take any um, questions just yet because we're going to do a few things standing and then a restorative pose and then after mm -hmm. the restorative pose, then we'll have more time. Okay. Awesome. It's just in case someone really needed to go, then while we're talking right now, that must just be enough for them to go or to grab a drink. So the next thing that we're going to do is on the handout also that you'll have um, available for you to print. It's called Posture Check. And this Posture Check have been just, it's part of good alignment is good therapy. And it's been just like completely changing the way I feel in my body and the way I comprehend my body as a tool into my farming and how I can make my farming actually a way to feel stronger and not just always strained. Of course, there is strength. So also what I wanted to tell you is that like um, state of being fit into farming is not a state that feels like I'm, I'm good all the time. I, I never have any strain. I don't injure myself, but they're less often. And when I do feel these and I have an injury or a strain, then I'm able to go into my toolbox of, you know, stretches and position and it kind of actually support me. So it's more about 
uh, prevention, maintenance, and easy shift, uh, easy fix. Okay, it's it's more it's more about this that you're learning right now. You know, it's it's about how you take care, how you're oiling your machine, how you're taking care by bringing awareness into your positioning, also your stuff while you're farming. Can you take those five minutes in the morning laying down on your bedroom floor and doing some of the limbering up? Can you go into the field and just at the farm gate, just a little bit of that stretch of the wrist because you felt it and you're like, okay, sure. I mean, if I can take two minutes to go to the bathroom, can I take two minutes to do that stretch, that wrist stretch, okay? So it's, it's all about this. It's all implementing tools that are efficient and simple that you can take off the mat, off the inside, and, and do them. So now, posture check has changed my life. My husband is a massage therapist, and he actually taught me this positioning. And since then, I've been just loving it. I saw all the great benefit from it. It's either you've been, um, you can practice me seated, but I want to teach you practicing it as uh, standing. So just first, let's walk around. So just walk around normally. Just look around, walk around, all right? Okay, cool. And then stop. And then look, look at your feet and notice how they are. Are they both internally rotated? Is one externally rotated or both externally rotated? Okay, so just, just observe, okay? Without judging, just we're little scientists, we're observing. And then notice your knees. Oh, they are, are they both bent? Are they hyperextended? What's happening? Notice your pelvis, how it is. Is it leaning forward? Are you arching your back? Where are things at? How are your shoulders? Are they slouching? Are they really open up, overly opening up the rib cage? I don't know, just check things out. Notice how you're feeling in that position. Good. Then come back to your mat, if you were away from your mat. And then we're going to do the posture check that we're going to decompose it. We're going to learn it together. So you won't have to always do that when you're doing it outside, but this is a way of learning. So bring your two fists together and bring that those two fists in between your big toes kind of, okay? And, and, and the feet are, are at two fists width apart. Now, outside edges of your feet are parallel. And so that out, outside edges of the feet parallel are going to make you feel that you're pigeon toeing slightly. And that's okay because you are slightly, but that's the proper anatomical position for your feet. Now, you want to push the weight of your body onto the outside edges of your feet. So if you have the tendency like me of having your inner arch rolling in, or if you have flat feet, then you see what it does to my knees? That hurts. Vagina. So when you want to push, it's as if you were pushing your knees towards invisible walls, but you feel that ankle. You remember when we were doing ankle rolling in, rolling out kind of thing when we were on our backs? Okay, so you want to externally rotate your ankles while keeping your feet nice and parallel. And now you want to bring that soft bend into the knees. So I'm showing you to the side. Sit are parallel, two fists in. And then I'm pushing the, 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 the edge, the outer edge of my feet, I'm creating that inner arch. I'm pushing slightly my knees outward, okay? So see how I am here, my knees are bent. Now what you want is to tilt your pelvis in like so. So you can even touch, your body, okay? Sometimes it's easier. One hand to the back, one hand to the front, and lengthen the tailbone down towards the ground and, and bring the pubic bone in, okay? So this is the tips of the pelvis that you want to have. Check. And then now, find your front ribs and bring the front ribs in as if you were bringing them towards your back a little. So you see, if I was like this, it's not proper alignment. Huh? I'm bringing my ribs in, and all of a sudden, my shoulders, hips, and ankles are lining up. 
that's good alignment. Now shoulders are relaxed, the heart is slightly open, you don't want to over exaggerate and be like this. You want to be back into your alignment and your chin is parallel with the ground. Now I want you to notice how you're feeling. You might feel very awkward. You might feel like, oh my gosh, what is this position? <laughs> That's fine. You know, the body takes the path of the easiest way. So when we come back into proper alignment, optimal posture, then it feels kind of odd. Let's check it out. <sighs> okay, and let's do it again. Let's walk around. You're in the field. You're going from the greenhouse to the house or wherever. I don't know what you're doing, checking on the animals, back and forth, back and forth, you're walking. And then you stop. Two fists in between the feet. Outside edges of the feet, parallel. So you're rolling out those ankles so that you feel the outside edges of the feet that are parallel are taking on more weight, okay? And you're, so it lifts slightly up your inner arch. Now, your knees are slightly bent, okay? And they're bending right above the toes so they're not collapsing in. They're slightly bent over, over your toes, okay? Now, tilt up the pelvis in, ribs in, arms apart, and shoulders rolled back and chin parallel with the ground. Now, let's take a couple of deep breaths here. Can you feel it flaring up naturally, your deep internal abdominal muscles? So imagine, in my case, I water a lot, um, either my plants, but more so my waterfowl needs always to water, you know, more water for their drinking water, more water into their pool. Winter, summer, it's the same, okay? So I used to position myself like this and like, you know, watering could take 10 minutes for a big pool, depending on also the water pressure. So I used to be like that. Okay, now from this watering position, I went back to, okay, I'm checking my feet, bringing my knees a little bent into the knees so that you have that tilt of the pelvis because as soon as you hyperextend your knees, you see I'm hyperextending my knees, I'm like that. I'm bending my knees, I can bring myself back into alignment, okay? So from watering like this, back to feet are parallel, even in my boots, inner arch lifted, bent into my knees. And then here is the big thing for me, is that tilt, that slight tilt of the pelvis, pubic bone towards the navel. That gives so much release to my lower back and then rips in to flare up those deep, internal abdominal muscles, left shoulder, and then my elbow is in alignment with my wrist and I'm watering. <sighs> or I'm talking to someone in the field, you know, or I'm making a social media post, or I'm waiting, like that position is amazing. Or I'm washing dishes. You can, of course, open up a little bit your stance if you wish. And I see there's lots of conversation going on. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to the Q&A afterwards. But tilt of the pelvis, bend in the knees, shoulders above the hips. Let's do it one more time. You're walking around. Stop. Check your feet, bring them two fists in, outside edges parallel, rolling the ankle outward. You're grasping the floor or the floor of your shoe with your toes. Bend in the knees that are right above the toes. Tilt of the pelvis, ribs in, shoulders relaxed, and you're in position. Breathe. So you can do that, you can let go of it. You can do that when you're in action into, you know, you're farming, um, you know, I, I'm doing something or I'm shoveling. My pelvis tucked in, my knees are bent above my toes and it's all coming from the core. I'm not shoveling like this. You see how the energy is going outward. It's not coming from a place of um, inner strength, 
here. So if you could remember that with also activating your pelvic floor on an exhale, imagine how much more powerful your shoveling could be and keep it close to your body. You know, we injure ourselves or we strain ourselves more when we bend over, when we extend our limbs away from ourselves. When you keep them close, but just move to the thing with your feet, you know, go there and do it. So I was talking about showing it to you into sitting. Let's do that quickly. I have a little stool here. I'm going to do it from the side. Look, I'm, up, I'm on my computer. Or I think I'm standing very well because you know what we hear into step, like into sitting and rolling your shoulders back all the time. Okay, I'm rolling my shoulders back. Do you think it's good posture? It's exhausting. It's all flexed here. It's over arched here. So tilt your pelvis, pubic bone towards the middle, lengthen it down, bring those front ribs right in, relax the shoulders, relax elbow, and make sure that your, your chin is parallel with the ground. Do you see the difference between this and the other over trying hard to be well aligned in front of that computer? And the, oh, I've been spending way too much time in front of that computer, <laughs> okay? So it's a great, like I said, a great position to take on when you're actively um, doing things, wiring and whatnot, but also when you just, you're having a conversation with an employee or partner or whatever, you're just standing there and then just stand in that optimal position Fling up your abdominal muscles and you're in good posture. The more you practice, the more the body is going to come back instantly into this position. But also I use it because you know what? When I muck out those tiny little coops for those tiny little cheeks, I'm like in all of the possible position and trying to scrape the poo that splashed there. And then I can't really pay too much attention to how my body lands, you know, it's just sometimes you're landing your body in odd ways, right? And then you come back and you're like, oh my goodness. Then practice that optimal position, feet parallel, rolling the ankles out, soft knees, tilt up the pelvis, ribs in, shoulders back and chin parallel with the ground. So I hope that you can, just by practicing with me through the screen, feel already the benefits of this. Okay. It's in my handout, so I spent quite a bit of time because I just believe that this position was like such a game changer for me, even just doing dishes at home. I was like, oh my gosh, I spent an hour doing dishes, like, you know, or washing vegetables. How about I do this in front of my sink and, or I'm a seedling, you know, transferring the seedlings and all of this, you know, greenhouse work into a proper position that will make your farming experience, um, way more sustainable for your body and for yourself, okay? So that was it. Now, before we transition into lying down on the ground into that nice restorative position that we'll do with a blanket if you have one, I have two little exercises to help you and that you can do in the field. I mean, I'm always doing this in my field, so for me, it's kind of natural. I don't care, nobody's around, and even if people are around, then I might just inspire them to stretch. So the side net stretch is awesome. You can keep that optimal position with your feet and your legs and your pelvis, okay? And then we're going to bring one arm up, and we're going to lean to one side. Now, when you're exhaling, you're going to loop down to the ground, and bring that shoulder away from the ear. And then when you're inhaling, you keep that bent in your body, but you're looking straight in, strengthening your arm above your head. And then exhale, look down, bring that shoulder away from the ear. And again, inhale. Nice stretch here, beautiful stretch here, but also nice, beautiful stretch from shoulder to side of the face. And again. Let's do it two more times if you can. Oof. 
Beautiful. Whenever you inhale again, come back to center. Great. Oh, I don't know, just pay attention for a moment here. Can you notice the differences between that arm that you just stretched and this arm? I mean, I'm looking at my computer and I'm seeing myself. I even feel like this one is longer. It's longer. It feels lighter. Um, I don't know if it's warmer or cooler. I think it's a little warmer because it helps with the blood circulation. Let's do the other side. Arm up and your bend to the side. Now, when we exhale, we bend the elbow, bring this shoulder away from the ear as we're looking down to the ground. And then inhale, stretch. And exhale. Keep a nice bend in the knees. Oh. We're creating nice room here into the intercostal muscles as well. It's awesome. Let's do that one more time. And as you inhale again, and come back to center. And again, notice sensations between the two arms and two shoulders. Good. Now, so right before we get into our nice relaxing position is that easy twist that I do on my farm gate, on the tree, on the barn wall. I love twisting because again, it helps me to keep a limber spine, okay? And those twists are very simple and easy to do. So if we imagine myself to hold the barn door, the farm gate, that maple tree <laughs> that I have in my barnyard. You're holding it, you have that position, you remember the optimal position, now it's your uh, default position <laughs> because you've been practicing so much. Outside edges of the feet are parallel. You're clenching, uh, you're grasping the, the floor with your toes. Your ankles are, you know, pushing towards the edges of your feet. You're having a nice bend tilt of the pelvis, ribs. Okay, so you're in the starting position here. Now, what we wanna do is a lower back twist. What are we going to do? We're going to keep our shoulders and our hands like so. So if you have a wall at home, you can face your wall, okay? And then we're going to move our legs away from it. But see, I'm keeping my shoulders, my, the top of my torso parallel here with my invisible gait. And you're breathing along the spine. If you feel that it's so hard to keep that shoulder back, then bring your feet a little bit more into an angle closer to that centered position, okay? And breathe. Good, then you can release, come back to your center, your optimal position. And we're going to do the other side. So you keep your shoulders parallel with the wall, or the gate or the whatever, or even your chair if you're at home and you have a chair. And then you're walking your feet away. So your, your, your pelvis is twisting, right? That's the twist of the lower back, but the upper back remains square. And breathe along your spine. Good, and then come back to your center and check it out. Oh, okay, so those are easy to take and to apply onto your farming, really. And I believe through my own experience that it will support your body greatly. And whatever supports your body greatly is affecting positively, positively your heart and your mind. So knowing that you're doing something that helps you sustain your farming at your personal level is amazing because what you're doing is one of the most important thing, okay? So now let's get to the last part. If you have the blanket, if you don't, then you just run and get yours. If you don't have any blanket at all, don't worry about it because sometimes I do that in the field and I don't have my Mexican blanket with me. But if you do, then open it up into that rectangle 
And this position is on the handout too. I didn't want to overwhelm you in the handout. There is three things that are mentioned, but um, if you want more, then you can always go and uh, look into my Instagram account. There is way more and I have also a free uh, wellness for farmer newsletter that you can reach out. Um, anyhow, you have your Mexican blanket and the fringes are going to be rolled in and you're making that into a nice tight roll. Nice, clean, tight roll. Always, when we use blankets in yoga or to restore or to do therapeutic, we want a nice, tight roll. Nice fold, okay? Then you're going to set your blanket right here. If you don't have blankets, then don't worry about the blanket. You'll just do the very same position without the blanket. And that's all. It's the one I do in the field. Bringing your hips on the ground, okay? Legs are bent either, you know, shoulders width apart, but you just want to make sure that your knees are staying parallel. They're not collapsing inward or outward too much right now, okay? If it's too hard to hold your knees parallel, then you can very well just put a pillow in between if you'd like or lengthen your legs. Now, I'm going to rest my back onto this blanket, this rolled blanket, okay? So, here, there is a few options, a few tweaking that you can do. The only important thing is if you have a blanket, you want to have enough space for your head to roll, to, sorry, to rest on that roll blanket, okay? You don't want your head to lean back or to be, you want your head to be propped up on the blanket. But if it creates too much of a lower back arch, then you can very well move the blanket a little higher as long as it stays in between the shoulder blades, okay? Or if you feel more comfortable having the blanket a little lower, then do it. But again, keep some space for your head to rest on that blanket. So you can take a moment here to tweak the position. So again, important thing, and even if you don't have a blanket, you see how the palms of my hands are orientated towards the ceiling or the sky, then you want this. Okay, you don't want to close up your shoulders in. You want to open up the heart and externally rotate the shoulder joints. Okay, good. And it's all about resting and breathing and slowing down. Your breath is natural and easy. And I'm inviting you to close your eyes. You can invite a couple of long, deep belly breath to settle in. Relaxing the shoulders down to the ground, allowing them to be far from the ears, and giving away the whole weight of your body to the pull of gravity. Imagining your spine as a necklace made of pearls. And each pearl is a vertebra. So you wanna release the pearls onto the cushioness of the mat, of the ground, of the soil, of the, of the snow, or wherever you will practice this position. You wanna soften them, you wanna release their weight onto what they're propped on. That can be the blanket if you're doing that with a blanket. You're inviting all the intricate muscles around the vertebra to relax and soften. Letting go of the weight of your head.
it's a restorative position so you know when you practice in the field you can hold us for 30 seconds right up to 20 minutes depending on how long of a break you have and the more you practice again the more it's easy for your body through your breath to know that it's time to relax so it's easy to just and clench everything and and soften everything all at once you're comfortable in this position allow yourself to stay a little while longer And at any moment, by inviting a couple of full deep belly breath again into your body, you can start moving toes and fingers. Maybe rolling the head from side to side. And then eventually, again, you don't want to crunch up to sit down again. You want to roll to the side. Rolling to the side here. Taking a couple of deep breaths on your side. Take it nice and slow. And then gently push onto your hands. And make your way back into center. And we're going to begin the Q&A. So I'll bring the computer a little closer to me. Hopefully I can answer some of your questions or see your comments. But again, just take it easy and slow after a yoga practice like this of an hour. It's been that. Wow. I know I feel looser already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did oh, quite great. a few of the, I did quite few of the uh, the poses with you um yeah, and then right. it was a big help especially um helping to, to co-host some of the, the workshops so folks please feel free to put your questions for julie in the chat or, or if you want to take yourself off of mute and ask your question and put yourself back on mute feel free to do that i will be putting in links um for our different uh, vendors and other events in the chat. So look for that as well. So anyone that has a question, feel free to ask it at this time. And I, I can start it off too, Julia. I, I have one question, um, particularly the ones that were standing. Um, is at any time for people who may have strain already, say our older farmers, can any of these be done in a chair? Oh yeah, absolutely. Definitely things can be done in the chair. Um, you know, like I showed you for, um, sorry, my computer has a bit of a weird angle. So I'm just going to try to set it up so it doesn't look too wiggly for everyone to look at me. Ah, it's working here. You know, that side stretch, you can do it um, in the chair. Um, the, the posture, like I showed you on the, on the chair, sitting down with the tilt of the pelvis, bringing the ribs in, the shoulders relaxed, you can do in the chair. What else did we do? Um, oh, that was a twist. Oh my gosh, I used to teach uh, chair yoga. I just love it. So you see my, my little toes here. You can have legs extended, but twist is basically twisting your body away from the center line. So you can do gentle twisting like that. You see, gentle twisting like this. 
And even some of the exercise that we saw on the ground, if it's hard to go on the ground on your back, you know, you can twist like this also, but you can open up your hip like that too. You can do that uh, stretch that we've been doing sitting. So it's, it's really, um, there's a lot of ways um, to have variations into um, um, practicing those movements and adapting them to your situation. Okay, great. Amanda has a question concerning about getting up and down. She asks, I have a question about getting up and down. Do you have any tips from going from the ground to standing up and back yeah. to the ground again regularly? This is a great question. Thank you for that, Amanda. Yeah, thanks, Amanda, because it does get harder <laughs> to get up and down from the ground, uh, definitely. So like I, I, I showed you, um, practicing, practicing at home. Is, is awesome and you know uh, baby step by baby step is it's what it's about so um i would recommend to do that in this and then from here if you were at home or even you know in the field and if there was a wrist bed or tool or something or chair then put your hand on it make sure your knees are above your toes and then and then really what you want to feel is that you're pressing into the ground with your feet and you're activating your pelvic floor on the exhale. Back up. And then again, you know, you, you could uh, do a little routine of this with, with a chair. I, I love taking stuff that are in the way usually. I'm like, okay, this can work, you know. You put your hands here, you find that squat position, and then slowly push into the ground with your feet, activate your pelvic floor. So it really comes from the core and back up and then gently, slowly back down, you know, or hold the wall and, or press, or if you don't have anything, push onto your, your own legs that are pushing into the ground, activate the pelvic floor, exhale and up. Does it make sense? Is it is it good? Or do you need something else to tell me? No, that was wonderful. Amanda, I hope that answered uh, your question uh, because that's always the difficult thing. Yes, okay. She said it was really helpful. Um, oh. Yes, excellent, excellent. And again, folks, uh, put your questions in the chat or if you want to unmute and ask Julie your question very yeah. quickly feel free to do so. We have a few more minutes left. Um, you know, sometimes when we're working with tools, I know when I'm outside working with the youth, um, oftentimes, uh, you know, I feel it when I squat, I used to play baseball as a catcher. So how do you keep from feeling the stress in your knees if you're squatting for a while? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I would do is, uh, and I feel the strain in my knees and my knees have been clicking and you know, all sorts of things, they've been talking to me. <laughs> so I would just take it easy on the squat and just really go more on two hands and knees as much as possible. And then really just either build that squat or just give it a break, you know, or just on your knees, like, like so. And if it's hard on the knees, just, uh, you can, you can, uh, you know, uh, wear pads, you can have little pads. Um, and again, it's okay to bend over, you know, sometimes you do have to bend over. I mean, it's not like I'm squatting all the time either. But then from the bending over or for high, from a higher squat, you want to go back to that optimal position that we did, you know, to reset kind of the body or, or to limbering up into some other movement so that it's the repetition. The repetition is great, but the repetition can be straining. So you always have to contact with something in there. If you've been repeating something, then take a break and, and try to um, try to follow your intuition and, and just to, to acknowledge your, your body, you know, like, uh, is was the alignment proper? Am I also at home taking three minutes to take the edges off or to warm up before um, my time outside and gardening? Um, and yeah, I mean, there's lots of, things that, there's lots of things that you can do. Knees are tricky, um, really. And what uh -huh. you want to make sure is the alignment of your feet. And if your feet are flat or collapse in, you really uh -huh. want to make sure you're pushing onto the outside edges of your feet and having that slight bend into your knees. And that's, it's transportable to your everyday life all the time. You know, 
at the computer or whenever you're standing, making a smoothie or washing the dishes, train your body in those moments. And, and then mm. you're refining that fine tune. And then after, I mean, I don't know how long I have, but I could show you some gentle stretch for the mm -hmm. knees, self care also for the knees. So, mm -hmm. you know, just um, reducing that the repetition of always squatting. If you're squatting too much at some point, I was just clicking like crazy. Uh, last season, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, it's not mm -hmm. helping anymore. Like, why is it clicking? Then I switched to something else. I switched to mm -hmm. being more on two hands and knees or um, to be more, um, you know, just kneeling. And if it's just not accessible to kneel, then, you know, I was doing um, just more bending over and then releasing mm -hmm. that, that, that back that needed it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. And Christina has another uh, important question. Can you say more about the relation to core strength and stability? That's a key one. Thank you, oh, Christina. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. So stability, of course, we have a whole bunch of, you know, nerves, like 7,000 nerve endings in each. each. So um, definitely, you know, like I was saying, the popular nerve um, is you need to, to bring some organic movement. You need to fill with your feet. So if you're not too much about uh, working bare feet, because I mean, honestly, sometimes dangerous. So, uh, but I would <laughs> invite you to also take some time just to walk in your garden, to walk in different surfaces and, and, and bring up that popular search sector. You know, when your feet, your feet are just challenged to move and, and the ankle is challenged to move into different directions. So it's when you're waking up that thing. Now the core is like you're, imagine a bridge. You, we know that bridges are not strong and solid like this because otherwise they would break. They have a core that is strong. It's like the metal rods or the whatever that is drilled right down into the bottom of the lake or the sea or the river. But the rest is kind of giving, okay? So that's the same as your core. Your pelvic floor, your core are that metal rod that is grounding you. And then the rest of the body needs to be flowing as an adapt adaptative, you know? And, and it's also a work of harmony. So for example, if I'm hoeing or if I'm shoveling, um, I'm going to contract more. Of course, everything comes from the core, but also the glutes and, and then the, 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 quad, the, the, the quads. But for example, my shoulders, they don't need to be like this and my wrists don't need to be like that, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's, you have to just really uh, view this. So view, view your core and your pelvic floor. They don't go again, like they have to go together, you know? And so we're not more, not more in the 80s. We're trying to do some crunches and completely forgetting about our pelvic floor. Pelvic floor must be engaged and it is engaging your core, okay? So that goes together. So this is your metal rod. This is your inner strength. And so because it's there, then it brings stability. Now also your gaze, how you're looking. So for example, I'm just thinking proper yoga, um, yoga poses if you wanna make a tree pose, <laughs> then you pay attention to your alignment. So you take that optimal position we've been doing, firing up your inner core, looking at something that is not moving, breathing, and then the rest of the body adapts, the rest of the body moves. Because if you do this, bam, you'll fall over. I hope it helps. I mean, if you had more of an example of stability that you need during your farming, then you can shoot me a, an email and then I can discern mm -hmm. a little bit more on it. <laughs> yes. And Julie, your email is in the program book, correct? Yeah, that's right. Like it's it's on the side of uh, um, on on the handout side side, and if um, I think when you print it, you should have it. Like it's just mm -hmm. small, but you should be able to with Stone Grove uh, mm -hmm. Studio at Gmail mm -hmm. So feel free to reach out to me. Really, I love answering questions. Okay, excellent. <laughs> and in terms of the handouts, uh, folks, if you want to send me your email, if you didn't get the handout, we will get that to you. So no worries. Uh, Julie, this was amazing. Like I said, I feel good. I was able to do some of the movements as well. I need it because I've got two more sessions to help host, so it was right on time. Um, definitely, folks, just as we begin to close out this beautiful session, uh, this recording will be available coming up next week. Please refer to it and study it. Uh, it's going to be very helpful as we go into the growing season. I put some links in for our auction. Please go visit our auction. We've got some wonderful items. 
uh, please go and visit with our vendors. Some of them do have discounts for being at the conference this weekend. And we wanna hear your comments about our workshop so far. So the evaluation link is in there. Uh, we're taking a, a, a much deserved lunch break. Come back, join us at two for the next round of workshops. And thank you so much for joining us here at NOFA Mass at the Winter Conference. Look forward to seeing you all at two at the next round. Thank you, Julie, outstanding job. Be well, everyone. And thank you, everyone. I'm so grateful. Take care. Take care.